Hey everyone, it's Gabrielle and this video is pretty spontaneous. It's very just done on the spot because I was just with my uh, doctor for, you know, my transition and he's who I talk to about, you know, the things that I'm going through and the progress that I'm making and where I want to go in the future with my transition. So I was just at an appointment with him and I have just come back, you know, thinking about a lot of things and where my life is and I want to take this time to really look back on my transition and, you know, how far I've come and, and a lot of the things that I've gone through because I think that honesty is the best policy and a lot of my viewers go through some things that I've gone through and I don't think it's fair that I'm not honest. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. So I started transitioning in 2013, which was a very defining year for me. It was the one where I, in the beginning of 2013, I came out as um, a gay cisgender male. I then started experimenting with makeup, which was horrible, <laughs> might I add, it was so bad. And then I, from then on, really experimented with androgyny and it was something that I needed to do to kind of get that gateway to opening up my transition, which is what I really planned on doing. And I, I did that clearly. Looking back on that year, I don't think any of it would have been possible without the support of my friend, Sophie. I am very thankful for her because she knew me before I transitioned and she knows me now as Gabrielle. And I'm so thankful for that because there's no one else that's ever going to touch that connection I have with her, ever. It doesn't matter if her and I fall out, it doesn't matter if I move away, it doesn't, and nothing will ever compare to the friendship and the, the relationship that I have with her. I want to talk about, you know, kind of 2014, um, some of the dark times. Um, I, I, I will make a video about something that is very important that I share with everyone on YouTube that is very, um, something that I really do need to do because I don't want other people to feel alone, but something uh, happened to me in 2013 and it affected me greatly in 2014. It affected my mental health and um, people don't really know the extent of how much it did affect me, but I completely shut down. I was very depressed, I was very um, unhappy, I was blaming myself for things that I shouldn't have been blaming myself for. And the time, that time in my life was when I was on the internet a lot and um, there were two people um, that were in my life at that time and they were probably the only people that were keeping me sane, the people that were keeping me um, grounded and those people um, didn't know me from my past so I didn't feel so ashamed and they didn't really know what happened but they were just they didn't know the effect that they had on me basically. Sophie obviously was a big part of my life at that time too but these people were also very big. There was my friend Essen and my friend Helen and I talked to them for a, a, a while and um, it was because it was like an outlet for me that these people were older, they, you know, they talked to me. A lot of people really didn't talk to me because I was different. I was a mess. I was an actual, a literal mess. Um, and these people were, you know, they, they let me talk. They let me be open. They let me express myself. And that was really what I needed at, at that time because I didn't have something like that. I mean, yeah, I had it with Sophie, but the thing is that when you're that close with someone sometimes you just don't want to tell them everything sometimes you want to just not put everything on them I had those people in my life and they were really great and you know I made some decisions that weren't so great with them and you know that costed me and that was something that I had to learn I had to learn that you have to treat people well or else they're not going to stay in your life whether it's virtual or whether it's in you know your everyday life these people are still people and if they're communicating with you, you have to treat them with respect and you have to treat them with um, gratitude or else they're not going to want to communicate with you anymore. And that was well, something that I really um, was poorly 
doing at that time because I was really taking these people for granted. I was taking a lot of people for granted in my life. And, you know, I thought my ego was bigger than them. I thought that I was better than them. And it was kind of stupid because, you know, what happens is you realize these people in your life and how great they are and you know the impact whether it was virtual or not doesn't really matter to me because they they kept me happy they made me feel like you know i had friends and everyone loved me at school everyone was fascinated by me but i didn't want that i didn't want to be a center of attention and my transition was something that was big in my school and these people that i was friends with didn't care really about it they were like okay i was so thankful for that also after i kind of fell out with them I, Gracie, my fucking everything, I love you so much. She's one of my best friends, and I say that with all the honesty in the world. She's she's a big, big factor in my life. And I met her, I don't even remember when we, we uh, I don't even remember when we started talking, but it was on Uvu. And this was during the time of my life where I was very unhappy, it was very unstable. I was, um, I was going through some bad psychological things. And Gracie was always there for me through everything. She was there through my bad times when everyone on Twitter hated me. She was the only person that I could really turn to because I didn't have anyone else. I had Sophie, but um, like I said, sometimes you don't want to always talk to that one person. And Gracie was someone that I really had always. She was always there for me. She still is. And I love her with all my heart. We've grown so close. I... I love her mom, I love her, she's one of the most influential people in my life and I, if I didn't meet her, then I would have had really no one else because there was no one else that I really talked to and Gracie was just that rock that I had for so long and I still do and I, I really, really hope I meet her one day. Yeah, it's a virtual friendship but we FaceTime all the time. Her mom is friends with me on Facebook, I'm friends with her on Facebook. It's like, if I ever met her, it wouldn't be like weird. It would just be like natural, you know? It would just be like, hey, what are we gonna do? Blah, 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 like, you know what I mean? I think one of the most monumental moments in my transition was mid 2014 in the summer um, and then the rest of it because I kind of just left the internet. I, I shut down my social media accounts and I took two weeks away from everything. I had no cell phone reception. And I spent a lot of that time doing a lot of uh, evaluating my life and, and the people that I was around and the way that I treated myself because I wanted to make sure that I was treating myself with respect and other people with respect. And I, I knew I was unhappy and I knew I really had to deal with these problems. And you know, one thing that I was really bad at was never letting myself feel anything. I never let myself feel emotions because I didn't want to feel regret from what happened to me but I didn't want to feel happy because if I didn't want to feel regret I did already feel regret I didn't want to feel happy I didn't want to feel anything I was completely emotionally numb and there were people in my life who helped me get over that and I thank them so much for that but I really had to take my time learning to feel again learning to feel anger sadness all of these things and it was really difficult for me, but I, I became in this really spiritual place, this really beautiful, enlightened place. And I remember it so clearly. It was like walking through a forest with nothing else around you, just nature, and really like inhaling the fresh air. It was the most peaceful time in my life because it was where I was really going over a lot of bridges and I was really improving myself and who I was as an individual which was something that I needed to do. I think those uh what was really difficult for me though was separating who I was at home and on uh and with you know my close friends and who I was at school because I was still very afraid of I was I was very afraid of letting people in and that's something I'm really going to go in depth on in this the video that I'm going to be making. But um I just I didn't want to let people in because I felt like I had that part of myself taken away from me. So, it was very difficult to kind of take that wall down and I'm still slowly doing it. But um I think this 2015 though was the most rocky year of my life and the, the year that probably tested me more than 2013 and 2012 
because in 2015 I was socially transitioning, I was medically transitioning, I had friendship problems, I was in love with like two people who were, well one of them I still talk to, um, but he, it's not like that anymore. He's really really nice and um, he knows who he is if he's watching this in 2015 I had very bad mental health in like March April May and June were very bad months for me just due to the fact that a lot of the relationships around me were crumbling and I had no control over it and and if I don't have any control over something um, it puts me in a very very bad place and I don't like to have too much control because I know what too much control can do to someone. But I did not like having no control because I felt like everything was out of my hands and I couldn't do anything. So what I what I really did in those months was I was very unhealthy to myself emotionally and physically. And I didn't treat myself with respect. I was confused. I was angry. And in the summer of... 2015 I me and Sophie we we didn't talk we we got in a huge argument which I think was very healthy for our relationship because it was something we needed to go through in order to grow and I love her still so much we were just talking we were just texting snapchatting I love her to death we've really grown and gotten past that but um I think it was this summer that I think me and Essen we started talking again or something and he was probably the only person that I really talked to all summer. It was kind of ironic, you know, like he, that someone like that would come back into my life when I was kind of in the same place and I was alone and I didn't have anyone. Um, and I like, really thank you for that, Essen, if you're watching this. Mm -hmm. Every time that I really needed someone, um, the universe has brought that one person back into my life and I'm very thankful for that. And, you know, still, I'm going to say it again, like, virtually or not virtually, it's still someone that's communicating with me and still someone that's helping me um, not feel alone. And I don't, I don't like feeling alone. So that was very helpful for me because that was someone that I could, you know, get my mind off of the things that were going on and just send Mariah Carey Snapchats. And I'm um, very, very, like, glad that I had someone like that. And then, you know, um... During the end of 2015, that YouTube video blew up of my name change, but um, all was not well in my life at that time. I still wasn't talking to Sophie, and that was really hard for me because I didn't know how to handle all that um, media coverage. And she was the one person that I would have gone to and been like, what do I do? And it was overwhelming for me because I felt like people were trying to just become friends with me at that point to look good socially, and I was like, I don't need that. And then to the end of 2015, I was in a really good place. I had a crush on someone who I thought was really cool, really nice, really sweet. Um, well, recently I just, you know, found something out that really kind of upset, upset me and I don't really have feelings for that person anymore. Um, but it doesn't really affect me that much because, you know, there's more important things in life than having feelings for people. And all that matters to me right now is that I have good health. I have good friends and I have good family and I'm good to myself and love right now if it does come into my life ever I'm not gonna shut the door on it but I'm letting things happen what they are meant to and I feel like that's the healthiest way to um, have my transition be healthy and I feel like uh, there's a lot of things that I'm gonna be talking about on my channel that are very personal but I can't wait for you guys to see them because they're really a way for me to be open and honest and help people feel like they're not alone and I don't want people to feel alone ever. Yeah, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!